as did the people in 1939, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt, in the midst of the Great Depression, called for the people again to give thanks. It must have been hard to do so in 1939, for 25% of the workforce was unemployed. Farm income was down by 60%. The heartland was recovering from a severe drought, and most of the economics put forth by the government and industry simply had not worked. Once again, the people could have blamed God and government for their empty wallets and their empty stomachs and the rumblings of the war in Europe. And I'm sure many did, but still, they took time out, sat down to whatever meal they could put together, and gave thanks. Learning from history, we are still called by our faith to give thanks. Yes, unemployment, in spite of the intervention of government, still hovers around 9.5%. Loans, as we know all too well, are hard to get as lender. lenders burned once by their own stupidity are loath to be burned again. Some, in the midst of all these tough times, have given in to their lesser angels and given up. Some act as if they have learned nothing from either scripture or history and fail to realize that even God tells us that there will be fat times and there will be lean times. I always like to remind people that for 26 years, through Democratic and Republican administrations, we enjoyed almost uninterrupted economic growth. In that period, we began to believe that the markets would always go up, that our houses would be worth more and more each day, and that our rainy day funds would know nothing but sunny weather. Most of us were wrong. Most of us are worth far less on paper than we were two years ago. And yet, and still, God calls us to give thanks. Jesus tells us why in today's Gospel. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. The people had followed Jesus across the Sea of Galilee, looking for him to do his now famous loaves and fishy thingy again. They weren't looking for a savior, or even someone who offered a deeper meaning to life. They were looking for a caterer. Jesus tells them and us is that what he is offering is far more important than that. He is offering gifts that are eternal. Isn't it true, men and women, that it is nothing less than our faith in Jesus that has sustained us through tough times? I know people I have watched sit in church Sunday in and Sunday out who when tough times came, threw up their arms like chicken little and said, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, or worse yet, have turned on their fellow parishioners and like the Queen of Hearts and Alice in Wonderland have yelled, off with their heads, off with their heads. Such attitude is never helpful because the most helpful thing that anyone can do in any time and condition of life is to turn to God and give thanks to remind ourselves and others 
that even when times are bad, God is still good. That's what Jesus is calling us to look for and to give thanks for. A good God who promises to be with us in the hard times. That's what Thanksgiving is all about. This is a time for all of us, especially we who live in the bounty of this great land to stop and remember that what we consider to be in life necessities are in most parts of the world considered luxuries. It's a time for us to remember that what we've done and what we have does not define who we are. It's a time to remember that everything we have and everything we are comes from the hand of a loving God who in Jesus Christ has given us not just bread from heaven, but life eternal. We have a sad tendency to forget God and worship ourselves when times are good. But when times are tough, or we live through a tough patch in our personal years, there comes a moment like those that William Bradford and Sarah Hale and Abraham Lincoln had and all the rest who have survived the worst had. It is a moment when we discover that we can give thanks for our friends our families, for our school, and most of all, the gift of faith that allows us to see things in a different light. I love what St. Paul told, told the church at Philippi. It's the motto of Northwestern University, and it could be a perfect motto for going through life with a thankful heart. St. Paul wrote, Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen. And the God of peace will be with you. May the God of peace be with our thoughts and our hearts this day, on Thanksgiving Day, and always.